My name is Russ Mioitz and I'm an artist from Chicago. I uh, grew up in New Jersey and I studied graphic design at Hushin School of Art in Philadelphia. And over the last 15 years, I've been traveling the country uh, and parts of the world seeking out historic, antique, symbolic, or ornate pieces of iron in the street, uh, mainly utility covers, and I've been using those as life-size printing blocks. So I'll apply some ink on top of the iron and then I press it into mainly canvas, but I do some paper, some other textiles. And um, the project started in Seattle. That's where I made my first print. And since then I've been to over 50 cities up and down the East Coast, the Midwest, uh, the Northwest, and, and a number of places in between. And I've been making uh, mono prints, so I'll pull one print off of a design and then I keep going. I use colors and compositions that uh, are normally inspired by the people I meet on the street, uh, the surroundings in that moment, uh, maybe the history behind the iron and uh, or just the experiences of the day. So typical print mission, uh, I usually plan out when I'm gonna go and I uh, put all my supplies in a box. I call it the print box. And it's an old tool tool case. I bought it at a yard sale about five years ago for two bucks. And I'll show you show you basically what, what, what goes in there. Uh, first, I got my inks. They're water soluble, non-toxic inks. Um, bring a broom, always bring a broom to clean it up. Have my palette knives so I can mix up the colors right there on the street. Uh, Briars, a couple different sizes. You can see these these have seen a, a lot of action in many streets. Uh, bring a ruler in case I need to measure some things out for the canvas. Always have a couple paint brushes for the smaller details. Some extra inks. Um, bring some water just to clean up. And the most important thing, a knee pad. Um, definitely, definitely want to use a knee pad. And I usually bring a little sketchbook, just in case I uh, kind of want to mock something up right there on the street. Throw everything into the bag, into the box. Got my canvas ready to go, usually already pre-cut. And then we out. Over the last few years, I since I'm in Chicago full time, I've been doing a working on a number of pieces that are multi-layered. So it's a, it's maybe nine or ten prints on one um, piece of canvas. So that allows me to first scope out the covers, find the designs I want to do. Then I can mock up how I want them to lay out. I experiment with color palettes usually on the computer and uh, once I decide on on the design and the colors then I mix the colors up I prep that I prep the canvas to the size it needs to be and then I go out onto the street and try to recreate kind of the mock-up that's either on a piece of paper or it's on my computer so in a way it's kind of like high stakes Photoshop um, because there's really no going back, and that's kind of that's all part of the reason why I really uh, I I've, I really enjoy making the prints is because uh, there is it is a tangible thing. It's not a computer graphics. It's not something that I can delete and start over, or Command Z. Um, it's it's literally when the canvas goes down and the inks inks already on there, and the canvas goes down. There is no going back, and you'd never really know what you're gonna get. I mean, it's it's always a surprise. It's like that aha mo moment when after you spend an hour or so on your hands and knees scrubbing and cleaning and planning and painting and then you and then you just get a, get that few seconds when you pull it up and um, it's like a surprise every time. So it's always interesting. It's always something new. This is a compilation of 12, 12 different covers printed in Chicago. 
probably about five years ago. And you can see that each one is different, each one is unique, there's different patterns, there's fonts, there's layouts, there's messages, the typography, and um, you know, it kind of gives you a glimpse into, into how, how many different variations there are of these. And um, what I like is each one has a memory. I, I remember each day, e each moment, why, why, you know, the colors were chosen. And um, it, it really kind of set me on, on, on a bigger mission to, to collect even more across the country. This is kind of the original Chicago 12. So I'm actually on my way to uh, a gallery right now in Wicker Park, Jackson Young Gallery. Uh, I have my work inside there. I'm a resident artist, been, been a few years now. And they sell original prints, smaller reproductions, um, and a number of stuff. So it's, it's actually been pretty awesome to see and know that strangers and and people are interested in my work. I, I did it for so long. Bye bye. Bye bye. For 10 years where, and I didn't really even show anyone. I just went around and I collected all of these prints from all over the US and I did not, uh, you know, I didn't really show. I didn't put it on social media. I didn't put it on the website. It was just a collection. So now that I've been putting it out there and people have seen my work and just knowing that it's inside the gallery is, uh, you know, it's really cool to me. People, people are interested. And... So this is Jackson Young Gallery in Wicker Park, what I was just talking about. Uh, I've been a, a resident artist here for a few years now. And it's been super cool to see people interested in my work and, and buying, buying my work. And uh, here are a few of the originals. And these are actually all, uh, all Chicago. So we've got the Chicago fire cover. We have a sewer cover. We have an old coal hole cover, which is my favorite cover in the world. And uh, we have a Commonwealth Edison. These were all kind of all over different neighborhoods in Chicago. And then we also sell some smaller prints. This is, a, this is actually the Under, Under the L series, which is a, a print made at all these different L stops, kind of arranged to, to make the actual CTA map. And the, the original is probably like eight by 10 foot. I, I don't know, I it made it over a course of three to four months. So it's super cool to see see all that time spent out on the street and then come in and actually see it as a final product. Just uh, by the you know very nature of the project, uh, I'm always interacting with people. People walk by, they they stop, they ask what I'm doing. Um, a lot of times that turns into an hour long conversation. Um, it, it's brought friendships. I learn things about the neighborhood about about the community. Um, and a lot of times these people actually help me choose the colors. So I'll be like, well, now that you're here, should I do this in blue or should I do it in a, a lighter blue? And um, so that's uh, a, a big part of it is really just what I've been learning along the way. Besides the history behind the foundry, they're, they're overlooked objects that people normally don't um, notice. And then I really get to get to look at and explore a neighborhood in a completely different way and, and meet the people that live in that neighborhood. Um, it's just a lot of elements. The prints are, to me, really they're just the tangible memory of that moment of that day. And um, it's not so much about making the art, but making the uh, experience and the relationships the project started with a simple idea to make a print from a piece of iron uh, right there on the sidewalk. Uh, it's taken me to places I never would have visited. Uh, I've learned a lot of cool things. Yeah. I've met a lot of interesting people and I've built a number of meaningful relationships out of it. Um, the craft and the term street printing has, has become a global trend. 
There's artists all across the world making prints and reimagining their own cities, uh, which I think is super cool knowing that maybe I've inspired others to go out there and make art or um, you know, find something that they're passionate about. Um, some of my favorite moments have been working with teachers in classrooms, creating lessons and you know, leading workshops and kind of using the art to connect these kids to their cities, to their neighborhoods, and even their blocks. Um, it's why I'm super excited to be part of I Paint My Mind and have the opportunity to do that here in Chicago. Um, so I hope you like the project and I really hope we'll be working together soon. That'd be awesome.